So I'll return now for, to the patient, uh, Dr. Osami Honjo, uh, collaborators uh, Lucy Roche, Christina Aman, and Thomas Forbes, who uh, submitted a project entitled uh, Development of a Novel Device for Treatment of Failing Fontan Circulation. So, um, uh, Osami, welcome. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Osami Honjo, one, one of the cardiovascular surgeons uh, in Sikkis. Um, uh, we really thank uh, um, Tetrojo Center for providing this funding. Uh, and it's a great opportunity for our research team. We just um, start collaborating and then kind, kind of getting just together to initiate this project. And then we are so excited to have this uh, initial funding. Um, anyway, so we are a group of uh, clinicians, uh, investigators, and um, uh, some mechanical engineering uh, group from U of T, and then try to um, essentially try to solve this uh, clinical problem of Fontan uh, circulation. So just said, uh, um, so we don't have a lot of uh, data, obviously, but I just give you some background and then why we want to do this, um, and then show you uh, very preliminary data towards the end. So basically, congenital heart disease is one, one in hundred uh, livers, and uh, the single ventricle, which is the focus of this project, is about eight percent of congenital heart disease. And uh, in sick kids, um, which is uh, the largest center in Canada, is about uh, up to forty percent, uh, sorry, forty cases of single ventricle uh, surgeries a uh, year. So uh, just give you a uh, overview. So those patients with a single ventricle um, physiology, they need three surgeries um, in a row. And then the final stage is uh, called the Fontan operation, where um, the both superior vena cava and an inferior vena cava is directly connected to the lung vessel so that they can bypass the heart. And then uh, uh, one systemic chamber can pump uh, only to the systemic circulation. So that's the final um, form of operation. And then there's no further operation uh, we can offer for those uh, patients. Um, obviously, there's a lot of modification uh, from the inception of this operation in the 1970s, and then uh, this um, is called extracardic fontan. Uh, using a Gore-Tex tube graft is the current form, and uh, we've been doing this uh, extracardic fontan since uh, mid 1990s, and then this is pretty much uh, the very standard form worldwide uh, to palliate those patients. Now, just to uh, give you a sense of uh, what's going on in Toronto, uh, in sick kids, uh, since 1980s, we've done uh, more than 600, probably close to 700 fontan operation. And um, uh, currently, uh, this is just an estimate, but uh, up to five uh, 500 patients uh, are living with a fontan circulation in, in, in Ontario. And uh, that's estimate probably roughly 1,000 fontan patients across the Canada are living. Uh, with this physiology. So, and then the recent fact is that uh, obviously it's an increased number of survivors because uh, we are doing so well, uh, but they're uh, living in long term. And especially the patient with a hypoplastic uh, syndrome with a systemic right ventricle, they um, start surviving to the medium term. Um, and then also we're doing a lot of uh, high risk uh, front end operations uh, as well. So, um, we can assume that probably we have an increased number of uh, patients who have a fading fontan physiology in the future. So just look at the fontan circulation. Obviously, there's, a, uh, there's no uh, sub-primary ventricle. There's only one ventricle pumping to the systemic circulation. And uh, um, the sub-primary circulation is uh, run by uh, just a subtle pressure difference between uh, systemic venous circ uh, circulation and then the lungs. And um, obviously, cardiac output, um, namely the ventricular feeding, is completely depending on the preload. Um, and um, uh, therefore, the uh, primary vascular resistance should be very, very low uh, in order to um, sustain this physiology. And then, uh, obviously, this is susceptible for a late failure. Now, uh, if fontan um, uh, circulation failed, obviously, fontan pressure increases that uh, gives um, congestion the system, venous system, um, and um, um, that's uh, decrease the filling to the, the systemic circulation so that a patient have chronic low cardiac output and then uh, end up having an end organ dysfunction. Um, 
the, um, the both coming from uh, low cardiac output and also systemic venous congestion. So you can, um, you can see that this is not a myocardial uh, failure per se, but this is a failure of lacking uh, subpulmonary ventricle. And uh, that's resulting in um, uh, death, uh, takedown on front end circulation, and uh, listing for transplantation. Now, if you look at sickest data, um, even with uh, the patient who are alive, if you look at 10 years from front end operation, about half of the patient have some degree of uh, some signs of front end failure, not dramatically failing, but they have some signs of front end failure. So, uh, objective. So this is um, based on our kind of uh, casual conversation, what to do with this uh, um, uh, patient. And then one idea is to, to develop a computation of um, a fluid model to actually model uh, the f uh, kind of healthy front-end physiology compared to failing front-end physiology. And then uh, maybe that's a start point uh, to sort of come up with some idea to treat those physiology. Um, and um, the, the, this is the first kind of idea um, of uh, treating. So what if we uh, make a kind of um, novel cannula that we can hook up to the fountain um, sort of circuit and then accelerate the flow so that we can drive um, the, the blood more efficiently to the primary circuit. So that's the kind of initial concept. So we uh, tend to be called that Toronto Fontan Canyon. We, we don't have that yet, so we <laughs> are to develop that. And uh, also, um, I think the, the biggest advantage of having this uh, team all together is that uh, using this uh, computational flow dynamics, we can, uh, we can test various type of uh, potential intervention, um, you know, medical intervention, or other type of device. Uh, using this uh, simulation technique. Now, the basic concept of this um, cannula is that, um, so uh, obviously this cannula and then pump system has to drain the blood efficiently so that you can decompress this congestive um, liver and then other organs. Um, and then also, uh, it's important to be bidirectional, meaning that um, this pump has to be um, um, pumping equally to the, each lungs, which is the, uh, one of the most difficult part of this system. Um, and then also um, effectively accelerate the flow so that uh, you can increase the cardiac output. Um, so that's the basic concept that we had to tackle. So, um, so um, Matthew uh, Doyle, he's, um, he's a specialist for this uh, uh, um, computational simulation. Uh, he did a lot of works on this um, uh, model. So this is the angiogram uh, taken from a sickest patient, and then he kind of measure every single vessels and uh, from uh, 10 patients. Um, obviously, with this funding, we expand to uh, 20 patients in adult uh, from uh, UHN, and then another 20 uh, pediatric patients from sickest, but uh, he done with uh, 10 patients. And this is a uh, current kind of um, um, it's called a TCPC, it's a Total Cable Primary Connection. That's the uh, um, name of this uh, font and connection, but uh, we, uh, uh, they were able to create this model and um, um, create this kind of uh, um, lamped parameter model. And so this is Matthew's um, the first work. Um, he presented in a couple of meetings, but uh, this is a healthy, so this is the velocity um, um, of the flow in a healthy front end circuit versus fading uh, front end circuit. And then you can see that um, sluggish. So if you go um, uh, lower, uh, um, the sluggish uh, flow is actually blue. Um, so this healthy one have accelerated flow into the uh, both branch primary arteries, whereas uh, this is sluggish flow you can see on the fading front end physiology. And this is a pressure, um, if you look at the uh, uh, cross-sectional cross imaging, that um, so this is a fading uh, front end with a higher uh, front end pressure close to uh, 18 to uh, 19 millimeter mercury, whereas um, healthy front end individuals have uh, low front end pressure uh, ranging from 10 to 12 millimeter mercury. This is just a baseline uh, computational modeling. And then uh, um, uh, Patrick, who is a graduate student, uh, just joined our, our team recently. He uh, created this um, preliminary cannula 
that can perfuse by dictionary into the branch promy arteries, and this is how it looked like, looks like. And then uh, he um, calculated um, kind of sucking pressure of 50 um, and 100, and then um, uh, he just um, looking at the flow and recirculation in this kind of intersection of a uh, front and circuit. So this is just uh, really work on progress at the moment. Um, in terms of timeline, <coughs> so in this summer we got a couple of uh, uh, students working on the clinical data uh, looking at um, adult patient in the UHN who are um, relatively healthy versus fading. Um, and the uh, data we're collecting is uh, angiogram data, so those anatomic data, also uh, uh, catheterization data, looking at uh, pressures and resistance, and then develop, um, the really develop this uh, computational model. And then um, eventually we want to, um, so um, towards, the, uh, towards the end uh, of year one to year beginning of year two, we're going to develop the first scanner and then put, a, put that on a, a bench testing with a, um, with the water. And um, really hoping that towards the end of second year, we want to create um, a canyon that we can hook up to a large animal like a pig. Um, so I have um, a small um, large animal lab, so we can, uh, uh, we really want to test that uh, in, a, in an animal in an acute setting. So, uh, so that's the overview of what we're trying to do, but um, the, I'm very excited about this uh, computational model because uh, it's not just a Kenya, and a Kenya may not be the answer because you have to uh, put the Kenya in, you have a risk of thrombosis and uh, other potential complications, but uh, you can do other uh, more non-invasive uh, things. So this is one thing I'm really excited about. This is kind of a, a core set that you can Kind of create a negative venous pressure, and then um, and then maybe you can support the chest wall. You can just uh, create more um, negative intrathoracic pressure. So those are things that um, we are um, kind of uh, discussing about. And uh, obviously, this is um, computational model is a great one to test before we actually um, making those uh, devices. Thank you for your attention, and then we uh, really appreciate your support. So, um, Lynn and then Dinesh. Well, this is really very exciting for adults as well as children um, because we obviously have many adults who are in this situation as well. Um, I'm also interested, I know that it will anatomically be different, but that one would also want to think at the same time about what variations might work, for instance, in corrected transposition of the great arteries where you have the ventricles in the wrong place, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, and for patients that, in general, a much older range, whether we could uh, come up with a right ventricular support like this for patients who, um, for whom an LVAD is not enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can, we can do a lot of modeling. Um, so as I said, I mean, this is, so right now we are not, uh, I mean, right now uh, this is a very simple model that uh, we assume the ventricular systolic function is normal. But uh, obviously, um, um, many patients have, uh, we know many patients have a diastolic dysfunction uh, on top of this uh, high front arm pressure and uh, high resistance. So we can model a lot of things. Um, and um, um, what's, what's difficult in this particular front arm circulation is that uh, even though you have a complex heart, uh, congenital heart disease, if it's only the ventricular systolic uh, dysfunction, we can safely put a ventricular assisted device. And this is not a case. So, um, but uh, I think this is uh, just a start. And then um, I think um, our team is kind of um, getting better in the sense that we, we as a clinician put a lot of uh, clinical input and uh, those um, mechanical engineer group did a lot of job modeling and, and it's kind of a good combination. Dinesh. Uh, hello. So th this is fascinating work. Congratulations. Uh, one thing I'm trying to understand is your choice of using computational, computational fluid models as opposed to using 4D MRI to try to assess what's mm -hmm. going on. I mean, you're still out of the physiological system. The properties of tissue are very different. And 4D, 4D flow allows you to sort of assess flow uh, accurately. You're in 3D space, then 2D space using angiographic data. 
and probably cheaper to get a 40 MR as opposed to the computational fluid models. Is there a reason you have chosen to go with one over the other? That's it. Well, 40 uh, MRI is a really exciting device, and then, uh, we're looking into it. But um, um, I don't think you can hypothetically test a device, uh, for example, you know, in situ cannula hooking up and then uh, kind of simulate the pumping. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, you know, that's certainly, I mean, in a clinical setting, you know, we really want to look at 40 MRI flow and uh, those turbulence uh, or uh, energy loss created by the fountain circuit. I think well, you mentioned that one of your earlier objectives was to really look at the difference between a failing fountain and normally functioning mm -hmm. fountain. And I was, uh, I was not thinking sort of in the context of testing the devices because of MRI compatibility, but I think even just to understand the physiology of a failing fountain, and you may be able to get a lot more data using 4D flow data as opposed to just 2D methods. And I agree 100%, because uh, one of the mechanisms of failure is this um, uh, non-significant energy loss through this conduit, because this is just a tubing, and um, and then this uh, subtle curving or subtle, uh, not a stenosis, but a caliber change, uh, they lose a lot of uh, energy. And then uh, that's something that we can look at on, uh, for the MRI. That's really exciting and good suggestion. Yes, Slava. Very, uh, very interesting and unique uh idea. Um, so obviously you know the Fontan circuit is just passive flow and you're saying there's, there's not enough flow in this passive circuit. I'm sure you guys, it's not my area, maybe this is a dumb question, but have you thought of using just an impella device which essentially just sucks fluid yeah. out from one place and deposits <coughs> in another? You know, something that's already available? Right, so the um, Impera is an it, it's a exciting device. Obviously we, we tried it in a acute uh, peak study, not in this uh, contemporary Fontan model, but with the uh, classic Fontan model, we, we did try it. Um, the beauty of Impera, uh, I'm not sure um, maybe you're familiar with, so Impera is a micro axial pump. Uh, the cast actually have a pump and then the sucking port and then the five inch uh, meter away there's a, a infusing port. Now, um, the major limitation of that particular device is that you need some sort of separation between sucking and um, uh, pumping port. And then that is actually the aortic valve in a clinical setting. So um, I didn't realize until we actually tried in a, in a pig and it didn't really work because uh, the this, this sucking mechanism is so... Uh, Too low. What's so strong, fun, yeah. exactly. So it's, it's recirculate almost 70-80% um, of the blood flow. And then uh, we end up kind of snugging um, in between, and that worked. But uh, you can't do that um, in a clinical setting. So um, micro axial pump uh, is a possibility, but you need some sort of a blocking uh, mechanism in between. Duncan. And it's a passive circuit, as we've heard, and the impedance of the pulmonary circulation will be critical, I guess, in maintaining the flow and reducing the pressures. So uh, is, that any, is that part of the problem here? These patients get older? Is there a change right. in the uh, <coughs> vascular uh, 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 capacitance or compliance uh, that then makes it more difficult for the blood to, to flow through? And, and is that a target? Because we're developing a number of drugs that, 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 that may be useful uh, in, uh, in improving that. Yeah, I, I think so, because um, as, as we age, um, this pulmonary vascular resistance uh, creeps up very, very slowly, but uh, consistently, and then uh, I think that's, um, uh, that's one of the major problems of this. And um, you only need, uh, you, don't, you don't need 100, 100 millimeter mercury power to um, go through this, but uh, probably if you have um, you know, primary vascular resistance increased by one, you have a uh, profound impact uh, of, on this um, uh, circuit with non-ventricle. Uh, non